Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on impeder matching. For this video, I'm going to discuss how can we actually design two element matching network. For example, for this case here, I'm going to show you an example how can we actually design a L matching network. This will be the part three series discussion on impeder matching. The earlier on series discussion or the future discussion, okay, you can actually take a look on the playlist under the description. Take a look on this playlist in order to fully understand the concept of impeder matching. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, feel free to give me comment so that I can actually improve my delivery. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Okay, let's start by discuss on a two element L network. Okay, why this is called a two element L network? Okay, as you can see from here, basically they are two element and they actually look like a L. So therefore, this form here is actually described as two element L network. Okay, a two element L network may be configured as either low pass or high pass, depending on the design requirement. So Earlier on, I have also done this, okay, which is a low pass filter and a high pass filter. Okay, so I will put the link also under the description. Take a look on that particular filter. In fact, these two concepts are pretty, pretty similar. Okay, so you have a better understanding if you are able to correlate these two videos into one. This will definitely deepen your understanding on this impedance network design. If a DC, okay, for example, we need low frequency path between source and load, then the LP or low pass version must be used. Okay, refer to the figure below for the possible L network. Okay, so these are the two possible L network. Okay, which one to use actually depend on the resistor of the source and the resistor on the load. For example, when we actually decide, for example, over here, you can see that L is here and C is here. Okay, which means that I actually have a series L and a shunt C. Okay, we use this case is when RL is bigger than RS, okay, which means that this guy is bigger than RS, and therefore I actually choose this configuration. Next over here, this is also a low pass filter. Again, from here, why I decided in this, basically you can see that this is shun. Okay, these are in series. Okay, you can see that basically the series arm is actually okay, the lower resistor value. You can see here, so from here you can see that RS is bigger than RL. So I know that RL is smaller. So therefore, RL actually has a series component while the bigger component has a shunt. Okay, so this RS is bigger. So therefore, it has a shunt element. But like what I mentioned, okay, uh, maybe later on I'll share with you another concept that I actually use on another video to let you understand this better. If an AC path, okay, which means that high frequency is required, Okay, the high pass version must be used. Again, refer to the below for the possible L network. Okay, again, from here, you can see that basically when they are actually in series, okay, typically RS is smaller value. And when they are actually in shunt, okay, you can also see that RL is actually a bigger value because they are in shunt. Okay, so this is basically a configuration. So either one, basically they are all high pass filter. So in order to choose which one to use, basically you need to determine the RS and RL. For example, over here, okay, from here I know that this is shunt, so therefore I know that RS is a bigger value as compared to RL. So RL being a smaller number, they are actually configured in a series manner. Okay, so this is what it means. The shunt arm or reactants must be connected to the higher resistor of RS or RL. Okay, the series and shunt element must be of opposite priority. Okay, so if this is a C, this must be an L. Same case here. So in short, okay, when it's actually a high pass filter, you can see that basically the top one is actually a capacitor. While it's in low pass, okay, you can see that on top is actually an inductor. So this is maybe how you can remember better also. Okay, the Q of the matching network, okay, they are actually applied by this equation here. So which one to use is basically looking which resistor is bigger. Okay, but if you ask me basically, oh, 
you just put a bigger resistor divided by the smaller resistor, that will be much more easier. Okay, but in order to fully understand, it's basically depend on which resistor is actually bigger. Okay, the disadvantage of this L network is that once a source and load is fixed, Q is fixed. For example, over here, okay, if all the source and load impedance is already fixed, you can see from here, I basically cannot control my Q. So this is a disadvantage of L network. So if my load and source, they are actually predetermined, I can't control my Q anymore. Okay, this means that the bandwidth of the network cannot be controlled by design. Okay, so this limitation can be overcome by using three element matching network. So with three matching network, basically I can control the Q. Okay, so the next few video, okay, I will show it to you how we actually can use this three element matching network. L matching network are always wider band, okay, which means that L matching network they has a larger bandwidth as compared to three element matching network like the T or Pi. So L will have a higher bandwidth as compared to the three element. So we actually has a higher Q for three element network like T and Pi. Okay, so instead by work, let's look at an example in order to let you understand how to design this two element L network. Okay, the figure below shows a L matching network that is used to match a source resistor of 50 ohm to a load resistor of 500 ohm at 500 megahertz. Okay, so design the L matching network for a low pass filter response. Okay, so this is what you mean. Okay, over here you can see that I'm given the source is 50 ohm. The load is 500 ohm and I need to design this L matching network at 500 megahertz. So next important thing is I'm tasked to design a low pass filter. So let's really do this question, how we actually can start by doing this question. Okay, so this is what I have drawn on the previous page. Okay, so firstly, you must decide whether you want to use low pass or high pass. As I mentioned earlier on, the question given to me is low pass. So I will only consider this or this. So I will eliminate away the high pass. These two, I will eliminate away. So I will choose either this or this. If you still remember early on on the concept here, in series, basically, they are a smaller value. Okay, so over here, if let's say this is in series, there are smaller value. So we want to use, for example, this is 50, this is 500. I know this is a smaller value, so I know that this is actually a preferred one. Or maybe it should not say that this is a preferred one. This is the correct one. But on the previous video, I also show you how to always remember this. Is basically, imagine this as a gun. The gun is always pointed to the smaller value. For example, this is 50. The gun will point towards 50. So from here, I know that this will be my L and this will be my C. And therefore, I know that this should be the selected one to start the design of the two element L network for a low pass filter with given the source resistor of 50 ohm and the load resistor of 100 ohm. So I know that this is the configuration that I should choose. Next. Once I know the configuration, okay, I can see that this is a series and I can see that this is a parallel. So I actually loop them into two form. So step one is to do the calculation of the Q for parallel and Q for series by applying this equation. Steps two is basically to do for the parallel and here is to do for the series. Okay, one thing to highlight, okay, the matching using this LC is only true just for one frequency only, which means that for this case, for example, it's only matched at 500 megahertz. So it will not match for the rest of the frequency. So this is the disadvantage of how matching network also. Okay, let's see how we can implement this. Okay, so this is a step one, okay, which is this step here. So I just need to apply the equation. Okay, remember, okay, the higher resistor divided by the smaller resistor, higher is 500 divided by 50. So I can calculate my Q as three. Okay, so these two steps, step two and step three, basically step two is for the parallel resonator. Step three is for the series resonator. Okay, let's go through the parallel resonator. So if it's a parallel resonator, it actually applied by this QP equals to RP divided by XP. If it's a series resonator, they basically applied by this QS equals to X, S divided by RS. Okay, take a look. The key difference between this 
parallel and series. So don't make this mistake. This is for parallel. This is for series. So once I know that the step two is basically fulfilled for parallel resonator, so these are the parameters that I know. For example, I know the QP is equal to three from here. Okay, RL I will know, okay, because under the parallel, I can see over here, which is 500. So I know that my RL is equal to 500. And from here, I can calculate what is my XC value. So my XC is simply RL over QP. So therefore, I found my XC equals to 166.7 ohm. Once I find my XC, okay, I don't foresee having any issue to calculate what is the value of the capacitor. Okay, so for the value of capacitor is 1 over omega XP here or XC. So from here, I can calculate my capacitor value to be equals to 1.9 picofarad. So this is for the parallel resonator. So after I done for the parallel resonator, I move to the series resonator. Again, I like to highlight this, the danger of making a very careless mistake. So this is for series resonator and this is for parallel resonator. Okay, make sure you don't make any error for this okay, when you actually sub for series or parallel resonator. So from here again, this QS, I found it over here, which is 3. Okay, the series resistor, okay, which is 50. Again, from here, I can calculate my emittance or reactance, sorry, reactance of the inductor. Okay, so I can calculate here. So I calculate this XL is equal to 150 ohm. And, and from here also, I can actually calculate the L value, which is the inductor, which is 47.75 nano Henry. So over here, can you see that with the help of this simple equation, I actually compute my C value and my L value in order to do a impedance matching for 50 ohm to 500 ohm. So this is roughly the three essential steps to design the two element L network. So I put everything into this. So this is basically the solution that I've done. So when I actually put this L matching network here, so when I actually look in here, okay, this will be like a 50 ohm. If I look in here, this will be 500 ohm. 500 ohm cannot be matched to 50 ohm. So I need to input this matching network so that what I actually look into this is basically is equal to a complex conjugate of the source impedance. So with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Thank you so much, guys.